One of the most common questions I get on my channel is what's the best lens for Micro Four Thirds? So in this video, I'm gonna show you a ridiculous amount of lenses that I have. So let's get into it. I kind of feel like I'm cheating on myself a little bit right now because I'm shooting with a Sony camera, but I'm gonna talk about all Panasonic stuff. I'm not sure what that feeling is about, but whatever, I'm gonna let it slide. So I have all of these freaking lenses in my arsenal. Some of these lenses are wide angle lenses. I also have some portrait lenses and then a few zoom lenses. They're all kind of meant for different purposes and I do have some favorites. I'll talk about some of that coming up. So I'm gonna put each lens on the G9 and just show you what the image quality looks like with that lens and then tell you some pros and cons of that lens. So if any of these lenses strike your fancy, I will leave links to them in the description below, so be sure to check those out. So the first lens I'm gonna talk about is the Olympus 9mm f8.0 fisheye body cap lens. It's probably the smallest lens for Micro Four Thirds, like once you put it on the camera, it's basically the size of a body cap because technically it is a body cap and a lens. It doesn't have autofocus or anything fancy and it's only $100. And as you can see, it is pretty damn wide. It doesn't have any stabilization or any fancy stuff like that because it's so small, but I like that it's only $100 and it's just so tiny, it's like a sliver. So next up on the kind of more budget area of these lenses is the Panasonic 14mm f2.5 lens. And this lens is kind of old at this point. This used to come with their kind of smaller, more affordable and budget Micro Four Thirds cameras. I initially actually got this lens on my really old GF3. It has that 14mm kind of wideness and it's actually a very sharp and really awesome lens that you might actually see this and think that, wow, this is a really fancy lens, but this lens is actually only about $200. You can find these used for like $150. It has pretty decent autofocus. It does not have any kind of stabilization built into it, but when you pair it with something like the G9, I mean, you can see how nicely the autofocus adjusted to this little skull right here. And another cool thing about this lens is you can buy this wide angle adapter for it that just screws onto the front of the lens. So here's what the lens looks like without the adapter. And then when you put it in front there, it actually makes it quite wider. So this is actually a pretty cool setup if you're looking to have like a more budget YouTube setup where you're like doing like a talking head video. So here's an example of the 14 millimeter f2.5 lens with the wide angle adapter. And this is kind of like a vlog style shot. I'm holding the camera at arm's length right now. So you can see that you can actually get a little bit of bokeh in the background, that blurriness. It's not like the blurriest background because it's only an f2.5 lens. But for the price, I mean, this looks really fantastic and looks super quality in my opinion. I don't know, what do y'all think? Let me know in the comments. I have a kind of sentimental feel for this lens because this is the lens combination that I used for so many of my early YouTube videos. So next up in the kind of more budget, tiny pancake lens options for Micro Four Thirds is the 20 millimeter f1.7 lens, which you're seeing right now. As you can see, that background is looking nice and blurry. And yeah, there is a little bit of autofocus problem with this lens. So this is not a lens I would really recommend. When you're shooting stuff with autofocus, I would definitely switch over to manual focus. This is a really inexpensive lens if you're looking for something that's a little bit wide at 20 millimeters, but with you know some of that creamy background. Oof, that is really close. So this is what the 20 millimeter f1.7 looks like when it's on the G9 and I have it fully extended with my entire arm here. So as you can see, it's really close and I would not recommend this lens for vlogging unless you like this kind of super close, everybody gets to see your pores kind of vibe. But I do like that you can see some nice blurriness in the background because it does have that super wide aperture of f1.7. So this is a lens that I think is really good for like close-ups and you're not trying to spend, you know, like a million dollars on a lens because this lens you can find used for like 150 to about 200. So this is a really inexpensive and really tiny lens. I've shot so many things with this lens and it's so much fun. So now you're seeing the Panasonic 42.5 f1.7 lens, which is one of my favorite portrait lenses. I mean, just look at the creamy bokeh in the background there. It does have some problems with autofocus a little bit, so I don't know if I would recommend this lens with 
autofocus when you're shooting video, but for photos and stuff, it just works so well. I mean, the backgrounds are nice and blurry. This is kind of my go-to B-roll lens just because it does really, really nice bokeh as you can see right here. This is definitely not a lens I would use for vlogging, but if you're doing some kind of dramatic close-up like this for a short film or something, the 42.5 millimeter f1.7 lens is actually a really good lens for something like that. Okay, I don't think you're trying to see this anymore, so that's enough of that. So another one of my favorite tiny lenses for Micro Four Thirds is this one, which is the 25 millimeter f1.4 lens from Panasonic Leica. It is a little more expensive, well, it's a lot more expensive than the other ones. It retails at about $700, but you can find these sometimes for like 500, and I'm even seeing one right now on Amazon used or renewed for about 400. So it is more expensive, but this lens is so beautiful. I mean, the image quality is amazing, autofocus is super sharp. This is also a great lens if you're looking to get some nice blurry backgrounds and the autofocus mechanism is super smooth on this one. There is an f1.7 version of this lens that's another one of the Panasonic Prime lenses that I would definitely recommend. I don't have that lens anymore because I actually gave it away in one of my giveaways but that lens is an awesome alternative to this lens if you want the 25 millimeter focal length, but you're on more of a budget because you can get the 25 millimeter f1.7 lens, which has really similar image quality to the 1.4 lens, but at like a fraction of the price. But this version, the f1.4 version from Panasonic Leica, I mean, just look how awesome that looks. It also works well for photos too. I've shot many portraits with this and you get that nice kind of blurry background. So if you have even more of a budget and you're looking for something wide where you can also get some nice juicy bokeh that blurry background this is the 12 millimeter f1.4 lens from panasonic leica also so yeah it's got that leica name on there so of course you're going to be paying a little more this retails at like 1300 dollars, but i've seen these as low as 700 or sometimes 650 if you want to get one used which i highly recommend because this is a beast of a lens i've used this many many times in my youtube videos and this is kind of my go-to lens when I'm doing more talking head kind of style videos. It has really decent autofocus which is very smooth and just look at the bokeh in the background. I mean that just looks so nice y'all. So this is what the 12 millimeter lens looks like when it's at arm's length. So I think you could actually use the 12 millimeter as a really good vlogging lens, but it is a little bit heavy because it has some really fancy glass. I love that the 12 millimeter has the wideness as well as the blurry background. So this is a really good option if you have a pretty good budget as well. So now that we've talked a lot about prime lenses, here is my first zoom lens that I wanted to talk about, which is the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. This is probably my favorite lens for Micro Four Thirds because it's so versatile. It's got this nice wide angle as you're seeing right now, but let's just say you're in the middle of a shot and you're like, I think I want to zoom in a little bit. You can actually use the zoom and it looks really good. It takes a little while to focus because it's Panasonic, but you know, I love that it has the wide or you can also zoom in with it at the same time. And just look at the quality. It's such an awesome lens. It's relatively lightweight and it has just the right amount of focal length range in my opinion with that wide 12 millimeter all the way in to 35 millimeter. So I've shot a lot of portraits with this. It's just a really versatile, awesome lens. The 12 to 35 millimeter lens also has really amazing stabilization. Like I'm not using a gimbal right now. This is all handheld. And as you can see, it's auto-focusing really nicely. And what's cool about this lens too is when you pair it with a compliant camera such as the G9 or the G85, the GH5, etc., it enables dual IS2, which basically means that it's using both the lens stabilization and the camera's in-body stabilization, which gives you a really awesome amount of stabilization. And with this lens and body combo, the G9 with the 12 to 35 lens, I mean, I don't even use any kind of like gimbal or anything, even when walking around with this, just because it's so smooth. So here's an example of what a vlogging kind of situation would be for the 12 millimeter to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. I'm holding my camera out at arm's length right now so you can see, you know, there's a little bit of wideness around me and it's not like super close into my face. You can see all my damn pores. This is a really good vlogging lens because you can use it also for B-roll. It has that constant 2.8 aperture, which means you can get some nice blurry backgrounds with this actually. I've used this lens so much and I'm so happy with it. This is probably the 
number one lens that I recommend to people because it does have that wideness and it does have the zoom and you get the blurry backgrounds. I mean, this lens is awesome. It's not super inexpensive though. You might have to drop about $600 for this lens and I got this one I think used for $450 or something, but I think it's worth every penny. It is such an awesome and versatile lens. Oh my god, these freaking cicadas in the background of this video. I am so sorry for that, but they just love to come out when I just start filming my videos, I swear. It's like they have some kind of sensor where they're like, let's be loud now, Ben's shooting a video. Anyway, what you're seeing right now is another lens that I really, really love, especially for vlogging and ultra wide angle shots. This has a bit of a zoom as well. This is the Panasonic 7 to 14 millimeter f4.0 lens. And as you can see, this is ultra wide. I mean, just look at how wide this thing is. My hand right now is only a few inches away from the lens and it's in focus. It's all in the frame. I mean, it is such an awesome lens. Colors look really good. I mean, the sharpness is really awesome on this lens. I highly recommend this lens if you have a little more of a budget, that $800 kind of budget or use like 650, 600 and you want a really solid lens for vlogging and getting like really ultra wide angle kind of shots. It's almost like fish eye style wide angle. Angle. You can see just how wide that is and I'm really not that far away from these two subjects right here. So now I'm doing a vlogging test kind of style thing with my arm fully extended away from the camera and it's so wide at seven millimeters, which it is right now, where you can actually see most of my arm. So what I like about this lens is you can get a pretty good framed shot where you're not super close, you know, like this close to the damn camera and there's plenty of width around so you can see your environment if you're outside vlogging or whatever and I like that you don't have to hold the camera all the way out here and then your arm gets super hyper extended and you start getting tired a lot easier. This lens from my face to the front of the lens right now is probably only like not even a foot away but it looks like I am super far away from the camera right I'm actually really close to it so this is an awesome lens this is probably one of the better lenses for vlogging if you're in the $800 kind of market it does not have any internal stabilization or anything like that so you're kind of up to whatever your camera has if you want stabilization but I like that in the middle of a vlogging kind of shot you can do a zoom as you can see right there and it'll do a pretty good job of autofocus in general. There's not a whole lot of bokeh in the background when you're pulled all the way out at seven millimeters on this lens, but it's not really meant for that. It's more meant to get that really dramatic ultra wide kind of vibe. And in the $1,000 range for wide angle zoom lenses is the eight millimeter to 18 millimeter F 2.8 to four lens, which you're seeing right now. This is another really awesome ultra wide lens. Um, again, you can see my hand is maybe, I don't know, four inches away from the front of the lens right now. And you can actually get very close up with this lens, which is really cool. So this is a really good lens if you want the ultra wide kind of vibe, but a bigger aperture, because this has an aperture of f 2.8 to four. So as you zoom in, because this does zoom into 18 millimeters. As you zoom in, you'll see the f-stop actually goes up. So right now this is at an f-stop of 4.0, but you can see that there's a pretty good amount of bokeh in the background. You know, it's not the best, but it's definitely decent. And you do have the option to just zoom back out when you want to use it as more of a wide angle kind of lens. So this is a really good lens for vlogging. It's also a really versatile lens for doing like general YouTube kind of stuff where you want that ultra wide shot, but then you can also zoom in and get a nicer close up of something. Come on, autofocus. There you go, autofocus worked, yay. So that looks really good. You know, it, it's kind of hard to tell once you're zoomed in with this lens that you're using an f4.0 lens. So now you're seeing the eight to 18 millimeter at arm's length. I think it looks really amazing. I mean, look how wide it is behind me. It's just a little bit less wide than the seven to 14 millimeter. But right now I'm shooting with an aperture of f2.8. So you can probably see there's actually a little bit of blurriness going on in the background. It's not the most dramatic blurriness in the world, but this lens is awesome for like the ultra wide, but because it has a wider aperture, you can use this in lower light situations and you can bump the ISO down so it's not as grainy around you and you're super sharp and that kind of stuff. But it is kind of expensive at $1,000 or like 800 used. It's another one of those lenses where it's ultra sharp and it has the wider aperture and the wide angle 
and the zoom so maybe you can see all of my pores right now but you can do a quick zoom with this lens too if you wanted to or do some b-roll or something and it does really well at all of that stuff especially when you're in the wide angle kind of mode so this is another lens that I would recommend if you have a bigger budget but you wanted something where you can go vlogging with it or you can use it in the YouTube studio to do you know talking head kind of videos where you can see a lot of your environment so there you go nine lenses for the micro four thirds system. Let me know what you think in the comments if there are certain lenses that you think you want to get or your favorite lens for Micro Four Thirds. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please smash that like button below. If you're not subscribed already, you know what to do. You can also follow me on Spotify and listen to my music on Apple Music. Highly appreciate your support. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.